Good evening. I would like to call to order the January 23rd, 2017 Belbrook City Council meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Edwards? Here. Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. McGill? Here. Mrs. Middlestetter? Here. Mrs. Seeger Lawson is absent. Deputy Mayor Schwella? Here. Mayor Baird? Here. May I have a motion to excuse Mrs. Donna Seeger Lawson? Mm -hmm. May I have a second? Second. Roll call. Motion by Mrs. Middlestetter to excuse Mrs. Seeger Lawson, seconded by Mr. McGill. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Formal approval of the City Council regular meeting minutes of January 9th, 2017. Does any member on council have any corrections or additions to the city regular City Council meeting minutes of our last meeting? None, Mayor. Mayor. None, Mayor. Seeing none, the minutes are approved as written. Mayor's announcements and special guests. We all have one item this morning. We have a new person for the Board of Zoning Appeals, and we are going to uh, complete our oath of office this evening, if I can talk. Um, <laughs> I would like to introduce Mrs. Brenniger. Would you please come up? And I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yeah, Brenniger. 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 Yeah. <laughs> if you'd please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Meredith Glick Brenniger. I, Meredith Glick Brenniger. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the State of Ohio. Of the State of Ohio. And will obey. And will obey. The laws thereof. The laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. In all respects. In all respects. Uphold and enforce the provisions. Uphold and enforce the provisions of the charter of the charter and the ordinances and the ordinances of Belbrook of Belbrook and will faithfully discharge and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter upon which I'm about to enter very nice job okay. congratulations Thank you. and I just need a signature okay and I will sign <laughs> thank you very much and thank you very much for volunteering these these uh that that board is one of the boards they how often do they meet uh just as needed uh i know there was mention of the meeting tomorrow night technically this term does not take effect until february 1st and that's oh. probably why uh that's probably so why you uh, mr oh, mr I'm mr looking. van hook uh is still a member of the board that was the vacancy that uh, was created here so that's probably oh, why you I haven't been contacted yeah, for that's that. why so the going forward you will but it it meets as needed um probably uh six times a year maybe i thought it was a a, a few well yeah. thank you very much and it, it is one of those positions that is very important we have a lot of boards sometimes we have problems filling those boards so thank you very much for volunteering That is all I have for mayor's announcements this evening. Public hearings of ordinances, we have none. Interjection of ordinances, we have none. Resolutions, we do have a few this evening. Resolution 2017-D, Mr. Schweller. Yes, Mayor, Resolution 2017-D, a resolution authorizing Robert L. Baird, mayor of the city of Bellbrook, to enter into an amended employment agreement with Mark A. Schlotek, city manager slash finance director. Whereas the council of the city of Bellbrook and Mark A. Schlotek desire to amend their written <coughs> employment agreement, and whereas it is required that the <coughs> Council of the City of Belbrook, pursuant to Article 6, Section 6.01 <coughs> of the Belbrook Charter, shall appoint a city manager by a majority vote of its members and fix his or her compensation. Now, therefore, the City of Belbrook hereby resolves Section 1, Robert L. L. Baird, as Mayor of the City of Belbrook, is hereby authorized to execute an amended employment agreement attached hereto with Mark A. Schlockhack on behalf of the City of Bellbrook, Section 2, that Mark A. Schlodheck is granted a bonus in the amount of 8% of his annual salary as permitted in the amended employment agreement. And Section 3, 
this resolution shall take effect and be in force forthwith. This is a revision of the city manager's employment agreement. Uh, we did fix his bonus for this year at 8%. The important thing to keep in mind with uh, Mark Schlogheck is that the city is very fortunate to have him. He functions as city manager and also as finance director. Most cities would probably have two people doing that same position. We're very fortunate that we're able to have just one person doing it. And uh, he does a great job for us, and we're happy to have him. Thank you. Council, any questions? No. Comments? <coughs> Just uh, re-emphasize Mike's uh, statement that we are extremely fortunate to have such a talented manager and Great. finance director. Well, it's a, <coughs> he's been decorated. Uh, <coughs> audits and everything came out real good. Yep. Yeah. He makes us look good. <laughs> he does. And I, I like to thank Mark for his services past year. And as always, he, he does do a good job. It is rare to have a person capable of being a CPA plus having his master's degree in public administration. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, a rare thing. A city our size typically not only will uh, have a finance director, but typically will also have a safety director, mm -hmm. too. And so Mark fills those functions as one. If we were to try and attempt to go out and behind two people or one person to do that, it would be very unlikely, and the two people would would be much more expensive for our residents. So thank you for your good work last year. Thank you. Um, and that's all I've got. So may I have a motion to adopt a resolution 2017-D? I'd like to move for the adoption resolution 2017-D. May I have a second? I second it. Roll call. Motion by Mr. Schwello to adopt resolution 2017-D, a resolution authorizing Robert L. Baird, mayor of the city of Bellbrook, to enter into an amended employment agreement with Mark A. Schlogheck, city manager slash finance director, seconded by Mrs. Middlestetter. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Moving on, resolution 2017-E. Mr. Edwards. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 2017-E, a resolution to proceed to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation. The City of Bellbrook, Green County, Ohio, met in regular session on the 23rd of January, 2017, in Bellbrook, Ohio, Council Chambers with the following members present. Robert Baird, Mayor, Michael Schweller, Deputy Mayor, Nick Edwards, Council Member, Forrest Greenwood, Council Member, Daryl McGill, Council Member, and Elaine Middlestad, Council Member, move for the adoption of the following resolution. Whereas the amount of taxes which may be raised within the 10 mil limitation will be insufficient to provide an adequate amount for the necessary requirements of the said city of Bellbrook, Green County, Ohio. Now, therefore, the city of Bellbrook hereby resolves section one that with two thirds of all mem members elected there thereto a c concurring, that it is necessary to levy a tax in excess, in excess of the 10 mil limitation for the benefit of the city of Bellbrook for the purpose of providing current operating expenses of the general fund at a, tax, at a rate not exceeding 1.3 mils for each dollar on valuation, which amounts to 13 cents for each $100 of valuation for renewal of a 1.3 of 1.3 mils to constitute a tax of 1.3 mils for, for a five-year period of time <coughs> commencing in tax year 2017 and first, co first collected in 2018. Section two, that the question of the levying, the question of levying additional taxes be submitted to the electors of the said city of Bellbrook at the primary election to be held at the usual voting places within the said city of Bellbrook on the second day of May 2017. The ballot shall be in the following form. Proposed tax levy renewal, City of Bellbrook. Majority affirmative vote is necessary for passage. <coughs> a new, a, a renewal of a tax for, a, for the benefit of the City of Bellbrook for the purpose of providing current operating expenses of the, of the general fund at the rate <coughs> not to exceed 1.3 mills for each $1 valuation, which amounts to 13 cents for each $100 of valuation for a five-year period of time commencing in tax year 2017, first due in calendar year 2018. Section three, 
that the said levy be placed on the tax list of current year after the February after February settlement next succeeding the election if a majority of electors voting thereon vote in favor thereof. Section 4, that the clerk of the City of Bellbrook be and is hereby directed to certify a copy of this resolution to the Board of Elections of Green County, Ohio, immediately after its passage, and notify said Board of Elections to cause notice of election on the question of levying tax to be given as required by law. Section 5, this resolution will take effect and be enforced forthwith. Yes, uh, this uh, resolution is the second step in uh, the two-step process to place the renewal levy on the ballot for May 2nd. Uh, the first step uh, was completed at the last council meeting and uh, the county auditor has certified uh, the estimated property tax value for this renewal levy. Uh, his certification uh, estimates that it will generate $210,000 per year. Um, uh, this renewal levy, uh, this levy is a five-year levy, so it needs to be renewed. It was last passed in 2012, uh, so with the placement of this on the May 2nd ballot, uh, it will allow the city to renew that uh, uh, property tax levy for uh, the current operations uh, beginning in 2018. And it is a renewal, so there is no additional taxes at all, so it's... Yes. Any questions on council? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt resolution 2017-E? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2017-E, a resolution to proceed to le levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation. May I have a second? A second. <coughs> Roll call. Motion by Mr. Edwards to adopt resolution 2017-E, a resolution to proceed to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation, seconded by Mr. Greenwood. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Moving on, we have three more to go. Resolution 2017-F. Mr. McGill. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution number... 2017-F, a resolution authorizing the city manager to participate in a contract with the Department of Administrative Services, Office of State Purchasing, for the purchase of a mowing tractor for the city of Bellbrook. Whereas Section 240.03 of the Municipal Code allows the city to purchase goods and services through a cooperative agreement with other governmental entity, and whereas the Department of Administrative Services, Office of State Purchasing, has entered into contracts with Zimmer Tractor, Monroe, Ohio, Southeastern Equipment Corporation, Monroe, Ohio, for the purchase of certain equipment in accordance with Section 125.04 of the Ohio Revised Code. Now, therefore, the City of Bellbrook hereby resolves Section 1, that the City Manager be authorized to participate in a contract with Zimmer Tractor for the purchase of the following equipment for the Bellbrook Service Department. 1. 2016 New Holland T4.90 <coughs> utility tractor for a gross price of $50,500. Section 2, that the city manager be authorized to participate in a contract with Southeastern Equipment Company for the purchase of the following equipment for the Bellbrook Service Department. One 74-inch extreme service <coughs> four-ounce knives for a gross price of $28,264. One 88-inch rear flail extreme service 4-inch knife for the gross price of $6,132. Section 3, that the City of Bellbrook directly pays the vendors for said equipment under state contract. Section 4, that this resolution shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. Yes, uh, this mowing contract was included in, or mowing purchase was, uh, uh, tractor was included in the 2017 budget. Uh, the budget was uh, at 76000 The total price uh, that we're estimating here well, with the trade-in is uh, just over $80,000. So it's a little bit higher than our estimate, but we'll be able to uh, uh, take some funds from some other capital purchase that will come in under budget uh, to acquire this. Uh, this is on state bid, uh, so uh, it is from two different vendors. The, the tractor uh, is from uh, Zimmer Tractor, and then the other equipment is from Southeastern Equipment. Uh, the service department has uh, uh, looked at the specs of this. This is, meets our needs. Um, uh, the next resolution is declaring the other one surplus, but just to give you an idea, the tractor this is replacing is a 1981 tractor. So although it's uh, $80,000, we, we certainly get our use and uh, we keep these uh, operating for a long time. So if we can get 
35 years out of this next one, we'll, uh, we'll be happy with that too. So uh, with that, uh, uh, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I'd just like to make a comment. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of new equipment has a lot better safety features. Mm -hmm. So when you upgrade like this, you get a lot more than just a tractor you get. I mean, there's, there's night and day difference. Uh, some of those old tractors, some of them could be very dangerous with this. And uh, a lot of times the newer equipment is a lot safer. Mm. And that's one thing I pay attention to. So we'll take it. it's a good move. <coughs> I agree with you. Yeah. Any other questions for <coughs> our city manager on council? Yeah. Seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt resolution 2017-F. Mayor, I proposed the um, a motion to um, authorize accept the resolution 2017-F for the purchase of the contract uh, for the mowing tractor. May I have a second? I'll second. second. Mike. And roll call. Motion by Mr. McGill <coughs> to adopt resolution 2017-F, a resolution authorizing the city manager to participate in a contract with the Department of Administrative Services Office of, Office of State Purchasing for the purchase of a mowing tractor for the city of Bellbrook, seconded by Mr. Schweller. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Resolution 2017-G, Mr. Greenwood. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution number 2017-G, a resolution declaring specific equipment no longer needed by the city of Bellbrook as surplus property and authorizing the city manager to dispose of said surplus property. Whereas the city of Belbert desires to maintain adequate equipment to be used by its personnel and whereas equipment no longer needed, by, <coughs> needed for use by city personnel may be declared a surplus property per chapter 230 of the Belbert Municipal Code. Now therefore the city of Belbert hereby resolves, section one, that the following equipment is hereby declared as surplus, surplus property. Uh, first one is a 1994 E. 350 van with a Versa lift aerial tower, VIN number 1FTJE34H4LHB46124. The next item is a 1981 Ford tractor with Mott mower, serial number C690989. Section 2 the city manager is hereby authorized and directed to dispose of said property in accordance with Chapter 230 of the Belbert Municipal Code. Section 3, that this resolution t shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. Yes, uh, the two items here, the first, uh, the van with the, that was our old bucket truck, uh, probably at this meeting last year, council authorized the purchase of a new bucket truck. Uh, we took delivery of that uh, literally on December 30th or so. Uh, so now we've had training on the new bucket truck and we are able to declare this one as surplus and dispose of it um, either through online auction or if, if there's a, uh, I know the school district has expressed some interest, but I'm not sure that uh, uh, how they want to uh, pursue that or not. Uh, the second item, the, the tractor, as I said, uh, the dealer has offered a trade in of actually $4,500 for that 1981 tractor. So we're just going to trade that in. Uh, I doubt that we get that much on an online auction for that. So uh, with the uh, passage of this resolution, we will begin the process to dispose of both of those uh, pieces of equipment. Any questions for our city manager? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt a resolution 2017-G? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2017-G. May I have a second? I'll second it. And roll call. Motion by Mr. Greenwood to adopt resolution 2017 G, a resolution declaring specific equipment no longer needed by the City of Bellbrook as surplus property and authorizing the City Manager to dispose of said surplus property. Seconded by Mrs. Middlestetter. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Last resolution this evening, resolution 2017-H, Mrs. Middlestetter. Thank you, Mayor. 
Resolution 2017-H, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a community development block grant program grant agreement with the County Board of Commissioners. Whereas the city of Bellbrook has been awarded a community development block grant in the amount of $31,100 for the construction of handicapped sidewalk ramps and whereas the agreement is required by the Greene County Board of Commissioners for this grant award. Now, therefore, the City of Bellbrook hereby resolves, Section 1, that the City Manager is hereby authorized to sign the attached agreement with the Greene County Board of Commissioners for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Section 2, that this resolution shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. In 2016, the city applied for a grant uh, to uh, add some handicap ramps, particularly in the downtown area, uh, for some areas, particularly down here in the uh, southeast plat uh, that uh, don't have handicap ramps. Uh, we were granted uh, just over $31,000. The city's share of that is around $9,000. Uh, so with this agreement being executed, those uh, that project can uh, uh, become get underway and uh, we'll hopefully have those installed here sometime by late spring or summertime. Any questions on council? No. This is uh, how many times we applied for this? This was the third time that we applied for this <laughs> grant through the county. And So yes, yeah, so this this, these decisions are made by the county and the county commissioners on these block grants and we have Finally, uh, after numerous... Only because somebody else backed out. But that's, oh, that's okay. Backed out. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll take it nonetheless. We'll take yes. it regardless. Uh, we will take it. It's well over $20,000. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions for our city manager? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt resolution 2017-H. I so move that we adopt resolution 2017-H. May I have a second? I'll second. second. Yeah. Roll call. Motion by Mrs. Middlestetter to adopt Resolution 2017-H, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a community development block grant program grant agreement with the Greene County Board of Commissioners, seconded by Mr. Edwards. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. McGill? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. That is all the resolutions this evening. We do have a city manager's report. Mr. Schlotter. Yes, a uh, few items. Uh, this is the time of year we begin to uh, go over some of the 2016 uh, summary of what uh, what we accomplished and things like that. Uh, tonight, just two two items to go over. First, on the waste collection and recycling statistics for 2016, um, just to give everyone an idea of uh, the the amount of uh, waste is, that is collected from the residents. Uh, we have uh, waste of 2,361 tons. We have recycling of uh, 623 tons. So it's about a 79 to 21 percent split. Uh, that split is uh, almost identical to what it was last year. Um, and as you'll see on the next slide, just to give you a sense of uh, the amount of uh, trash that is generated, uh, we're actually down a little bit from where we were the last couple of years. Um, but on average, uh, when you look at the 2,561 households, each household generates uh, 1.17 tons of waste. Uh, of that, 0.92 tons uh, goes to the landfill, and 0.25 tons uh, is recycled and is included in the recycling stream. Uh, again, that's fairly consistent. You can see over the past uh, seven years here, uh, these numbers have been fairly consistent. We did see an increase in the recycling over 2010 and 11. I think this is when we had biweekly recycling rather than weekly recycling. Um, and I, so I think once we went back to the weekly recycling, I think you saw an increase back to uh, uh, and the amount of re recycling that is done. But like I said, it's, it's, it's stayed in the amount of uh, um, about 80% to 20%. Uh, and then if you look at this slide, this sort of gives you a, a sense of uh, some other cities. Uh, this information is provided by the uh, uh, Green County Sanitary Engineer. Uh, they do a survey of this. Uh, but you can see that we are right in line in terms of, for the most part, uh, with the exception of Fairborn, uh, the amount of ton average waste, but what you will also see is the amount of recycling uh, is uh, significantly higher than some of these other communities. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is our uh, service fee is $13 per month, and everyone else is uh, the, at least $15, uh, $18 in Centerville, over uh, 1860 uh, and I'm sure that uh, Beaver Creek, they don't have a single hauler you contract with, they hauler yourself, 
and I can almost guarantee those are all well over twenty dollars uh, a month uh, for the same exact service that we're getting here. So I think we provide a, a great service to the residents uh, for a very reasonable price. Uh, this fee has actually been able to be decreased uh, over the past uh, several years. It was up to seventeen dollars. Uh, per month that has been decreased back down to 13 and that uh, sustains that uh, waste collection fund nicely. Um, the other uh, item are the 2017 property taxes. Uh, everyone uh, within the next few weeks will be getting their property tax bill from the county auditor. Uh, a couple things, uh, th this is just the overall property tax valuation for the city of Bellbrook. Uh, you can see that our residential values increased. Uh, that's to be expected with the additions uh, of the homes in the vineyards and some of the homes in Highview Terrace and the other uh, new homes that have been built. Our commercial industrial value has actually decreased. Uh, again, we at $11 million, we do not have a lot of commercial and we have virtually no industrial property. Uh, commercial property has decreased. Uh, so our total real estate has uh, increased 1.26. Our uh, tangible public utility has actually increased 7%. So our overall value has increased a, a, a modest 1.39%. Uh, we will see a, a little bit extra property tax from that, but not very much uh, at all in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but the thing that is uh, more relevant to our uh, residents are uh, here in this column is what, if, if you had a $100,000 home, that was the value of that home, here's what you would have paid in 2016, $2,536. In 2017, that actually goes down by $8 uh, because some of that additional value and some other uh, circumstances and there were no new levies uh, passed in the city of Bellbrook, either for the schools, the county, anything else in 2016. So there's actually a slight decrease in taxes uh, on your tax bill uh, for 2017. So uh, everyone, unless for some reason the value of their property went up, um, everyone should see a slight decrease or at least a flat uh, property tax bill from what they did uh, last year. Uh, and like I said, those uh, those uh, bills will be mailed out by the county auditor here. Today. Did you get it today? Yeah. Okay. Well, they, uh, if not, you'll be getting it shortly, and uh, those will be coming out. So if you have any questions, uh, the Green County Auditor is the one who handles those, and you can uh, find all that information on their website. They have a lot of valuable information. If you have questions about your values and the rates and where your money's going and anything like that, or you can certainly call here, and we would be uh, happy to help you with that too. Um, then moving on from that, uh, a couple items uh, that I included in your packet. Uh, comprehensive plan update. Uh, I know we've talked about that a couple times. We included that in the budget this year. I included a scope of services from the Green County Regional Planning Commission. They've provided a scope of services for what they intend to do and the cost for that. Um, uh, their cost uh, is listed in here at $21,800. Uh, they break it out on an hourly basis. I've, I've talked with their director. Um, and he is willing to do a not to exceed contract. Uh, I'm not I'm not very fond of contracts that just have hourly rates and and there's not a limit to them. So uh, he's willing to do that. Uh, but the the key for this comprehensive plan update, our comprehensive plan is dated 1974, so it hasn't obviously been updated for for quite a while. Um, but there are some areas of focus: uh, the old bridge, the State Route 725 corridor, corridor the existing neighborhoods, uh, the fringe and vacant areas, the water service district, and walkability and connectivity. Those are the, the primary areas of focus that they want to look to update. Um, so unless council has any questions, uh, I will uh, work with regional planning and get a contract and have bring that back to council, uh, probably at our next council meeting for approval so that we can move forward. Uh, they're estimating this to be an 18 month process uh, by the time they gather the information put it together, have the necessary meetings uh, with uh, council and other, you know, planning board members, things of that nature. Uh, that's the, uh, the anticipation for this. Um, but if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Council? Well, it's something we need to do. It is. It's uh, yeah, been a long time coming, so. Uh, yeah. Have you seen the work they've done before? Has it come out with a pretty good product? Or? Yes, I, I've seen some of that. They, they, they do good work. And, and you know, I, I also priced this with some private uh, uh, planning okay. and uh, firms, and it, the, the cost was significantly higher. Uh, not that cost is the, the most important thing, but it obviously is a priority. Uh, and as long as we can get the quality product that we have here, uh, uh, we'll be satisfied with, uh, with what they can provide to us. And what, what are some of the things that we'll get out of this from a benefit standpoint, other than a bunch of information about the city? I mean, no one has been updated 
since 1974. How will we utilize it, I guess? Well, we'll use it. So the, the primarily the, the biggest areas of focus that I see are the old village area. So just come up with some idea of uh, the, the vision, so to speak, for what we want the old village to be going forward. Uh, as an offshoot of this, we can, we can probably talk about some of the regulations that we have in place for the old village and, and where they need to apply and where they don't need to apply. Right now, it's a fairly broad area that encompasses some, some places that maybe it shouldn't. So I think uh, a review of the old village and then the uh, State Route 725 corridor, uh, you know, the, the future vision of that. Uh, obviously, in the western end, it's a fairly commercial with the strip malls and things like that. But as it, as it begins to come here to the east, what, what is our vision uh, that we see? We've had a few inquiries for some of those residential properties to be turned into commercial. Not a lot, but that's something that we want to address and, and sort of lay out, again, the vision of what we see that to be in the future. If it's going to be residential, then that will be dictated or will be spelled out within this comprehensive plan. So there'll be other benefits to it, but those, in my mind, are the two biggest things that I see that that we deal with on a on a I want to say daily basis, but on a regular basis here, uh, with people coming in and having questions about uh, what they can and can't do with their property. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Does it include uh, aquifer uh, protection, protection, water. protection, and? Uh, um, uh, not not possible. specifically, uh, but I, I know, and I know you've mentioned uh, something like that before. I know that's something else that we can we can look for look as sort of a separate. It's a separate document now outside of the comprehensive plan. And, and I think look. they did that back in seventy three or seventy four. They may have, and I thought there was an update to it maybe in the early nineties or something like that. I, I, but that that's <sighs> that's not specifically part of this contract, but it's okay. something that we can look to make sure is up up to date and uh, appropriate. Uh, for today and, and what we're dealing with today. Because I've read that, that, you know, we all know since 74, this ain't the same place. I mean. <laughs> yes, yeah, there's been a so, few changes since then. And then as far as all the development around us, um, traffic, do they touch that at all? Uh, I think they will. That's, uh, you know, they talk about the fringe areas and I think they will, will touch on some of the traffic, particularly as it relates to the, the developments that are directly adjacent to us, uh, yeah. the one on Upper Bellbrook is probably the one that is the most right. uh, prevalent and the most uh, is going to have the biggest impact on us to our existing neighborhoods. We've already heard that at, at council meetings with uh, residents on Upper Hillside uh, and, you know, the traffic and things of that nature. So, yeah, I, I, that, that is that portion of it. They will address that. I don't know that they'll have... Um, a whole lot of recommendations, but at least address the current situation and what, what the future looks like. Okay. How does the aquifer differ from groundwater resources and well field protection areas, which is listed in this? Okay, it, it, it may be included, I, I, but I know there's a separate, they, they're not going to go to the extent that maybe the separate uh, um, document talks about. Okay. Um, I know the, the aquifer document is very engineer speak engineering speak as far as rates of flow and all that type of thing mm -hmm. and I was kind of questioning about some of the possible uh, things that could damage aquifer you know as far as runoff or whatever I didn't know if they got into that or not for the new development well, we I, I will I will investigate that further and then uh, find out okay. do we have any other questions on council for regarding this Seeing you, now you'll bring no, I, it'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I'll come back with a resolution. Um, what about? I'm just curious. Bike paths. Uh, that's that's part of the, the walkability and connectivity. I'm curious of walkability. Okay. And, and and actually that leads into my next topic. There will be, uh, again through regional planning, separate of the comprehensive plan, there will be a walkable community workshop. We've tentatively scheduled that for Wednesday, April 12th. I don't know the specifics of the times. It'll probably be during the day. But the intent of that is to have a workshop, bring everyone in here. Uh, it's in conjunction with the Green County Regional Planning and the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission. Uh, they will come and then they will break off into groups, sort of walk the downtown area, talk about uh, walkability, connectivity, other issues that, uh, uh, that we all drive by every day but you may not see uh, on a daily basis. So uh, like I said, that is tentatively set, up, set for Wednesday, April 12th. Uh, as I get more information, I will pass it on to council and we'll certainly uh, bring it up here. Uh, that'll be something that the public is invited to, we'll invite all the boards and commissions to. Uh, anyone that is uh, able and willing to participate is welcome to uh, participate in that. Mm -hmm. 
That is all. Good. Yep, that's all I have this evening. Does I'm anyone sorry. else have any questions for our city manager this evening? If not, we will move on to committee reports. Start with service. It's done. Oh. I think John is not here. Pretty sure we're not going to get one of those since she's <laughs> out of town. Safety. Uh, the only thing I'm mentioning is uh, next month we have the fire and police uh, yearly Report. reports. It'll be very interesting. That's all I have. Mm. Finance and audit, Mike. There in our packages this month, we got a financial update for some uh, facts based on 2016 activity, and it looks like. Uh, Revenue is down, but expenditures are down a little bit more. And Mark, if I'm not reading this wrong, it says that uh, essentially our expenses exceed revenue by like thirty thousand dollars, and that's probably the smallest margin we've ever had. It sounds like we're almost right on track, and that's almost a break-even year, which is good for us. Yes, um, and it probably there were some timing issues there, like that right. uh, bucket truck uh, at a hundred thousand dollars was not we haven't paid for it until 2017 so there's a few of those things but yes this was as good. Uh, uh, good a year as we've had in a while in terms of revenue and expenses and also know the last two pages of the capital expenditures and uh, for the viewing audience this stuff's on the web and uh, certainly it's worth looking at because we spend a fair amount of capital and we spend only if we need to but we've done a really good job on spending less than the budget amount I kind of like that approach to budget what we think it's going to be and then somehow get the cost to come in a little bit less so Good job on the expenditures and good job in 2016. Thank you. Any, let's see, moving down the list, community affairs. Uh, the only thing that I have is uh, that we still have an opening on the Old Village Review Board. Um, I think it's just one spot, so all of our boards are filled with that one exception. So, so if anyone knows someone who would like to serve on the Old Village Review Board, how often do they meet? as needed and it isn't a lot and a lot of the um, votes are actually done by email if it's if possible mm -hmm. for sign approvals and gotcha. things of that okay. nature yes all right well thank you very much uh moving on old business does anyone on council have any old business new business <coughs> any new business no. anyone else have any new business open discussion Nothing tonight, Mayor. Forrest? I have nothing, Mayor. <laughs> Mr. McGill? Nothing, sir. I have <clears throat> just one thing more of a community awareness um, that we've all driven by Tom Smulch on uh, Ferry Road and seen those huge piles of mulch and gravel that are in preparation for the spring uh, gardening time. Unfortunately, those are piled up in the floodplain. And if there is a flood, which they will happen, and that mulch gets washed into the little sugar creek, it will <coughs> smother and kill everything in the creek and damage everything downstream from there. Um, I understand that Greene County is working with Mr. Powell to correct the situation. Uh, just wanted the viewing audience to know that there is a potential disaster sitting there and I'm hoping that we can get it eliminated before it's too late to close the barn door. Thank you. And that this is um, it's not in the township. It's not yeah. in the city. This is in the township. Yeah. We have no so, authority so we, other than as a city. <coughs> um, do not have authority there. Right. Just it's a community awareness issue. That's uh, if it's in the aquifer. If it could affect the aquifer, we do have some authority. I think. I think it's across uh, the, creek the, the, the I think the the with well I have well the well protection area which of course that section over there is contaminated um, that we yeah. own this whatever 40 acres or right back there on uh, we own it on the north side of the creek but the the aquifer protection area may actually extend, extend outside of city boundaries because it's yeah. you know mm -hmm. the aquifer is you know just mm -hmm. like over on the, the soccer field not all of that is in the, in the city either a lot sure. of our yeah. wells aren't either so that's something that we can we can look Checking on and too. see from the aquifer perspective I know mm -hmm. you know your primary concern is more on the Run stream on. side of the that and, and, yeah. and getting in the stream but obviously that would potentially have an impact on the on the aquifer too okay. that, that was one of the things Mark I was asking about the uh, previous uh, about the uh, 7.5 then the uh, 
getting those projects done. Oh, right. And that's why I'm mentioning because of the new businesses, it hasn't been done in a long time. Right. And that would include chemical inventories and everything else on new businesses. It <coughs> could be a possible infiltration into the, the aquifer. <coughs> those are not real hard things to take care, take care of. Or it's just mainly an inventory and knowing what What's that? Just knowing what the threat is, you know, just like mm -hmm. she brought up mm -hmm. the fact that the mulch is not hurting anything, but it's possible mm -hmm. something that could be detrimental. <clears throat> we need our aquifer. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Any other open discussion comments down there? Mr. Schwaller? Nothing for the nightmare. And I have nothing this evening. This is the opportunity for anyone who would like to get up. To, uh, for open discussion, if you have any questions, you need to say your name, and you would have five minutes, and your address. I see one young gentleman here this evening. Now, I normally pick on guys that are here for, do uh, you have anything you'd like to come up and say tonight? Oh, well. Just uh, say your name, your address. Here. Yep. And you'll be on, you'll be, look at the pretty camera. <laughs> Oh, lots of them. Yeah, lots of cameras. Uh, hello, my name is Joey Derrico. I live on 1822 Sugar Run Trail, right over by Stephen Bell. Um, I came here tonight basically because I'm someone who's really interested in the workings of government and just kind of the political field in general. Um, I'm pretty active in it. I'm in two service clubs at school, and I volunteer for the, the Democratic Party here in Greene County. So um, I was just looking to maybe further expand my interests um, in the workings of government by um, possibly interning for one of you guys maybe once a week. I thought that'd be a good way to understand how local government works and how it functions at a local level. Well, thank you. And I'm sure we can uh, have you talk to Don or someone else and um, follow yeah, up on that. He had sent an email and Did I he? actually just responded uh, and. Uh, yeah. just this afternoon Scrambling. and here he is so um, uh, but inquiring about that and I suggested coming to one of these meetings would, oh, be, okay. uh, would, would be a good start that uh, obviously a lot of what council does is is right here uh, but yeah we can certainly uh, uh, meet with him but I thought uh, having him come and speak to you directly first uh, uh, would be a good start to that mm -hmm. and then we can we can see what uh, what options we have available to uh, okay. to help with that it's always nice to have people interested in the community we've had a few people over time we were uh, talking about a young man, uh, Giles Allen, yep. who now is in his last year of law school. He knows more politicians in the state <laughs> house and U.S. Congress than I do, and he's 22 <laughs> that years old. something. <laughs> I know, um, but he's been very politically active for numerous and numerous people over the years. So it's it's great to get into and understand how the system works. Yeah, I could definitely see that as my career later on. That sort of fact. <clears throat> I encourage you to do what you're doing because we sure need some people like you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Especially younger people. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you. I really, I really look forward to that. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming yeah. this evening. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone else in our audience have any open discussion questions? I don't see any. I see head shaking now. Um, <laughs> does any member on council have any other business to come before us this city council meeting? None. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.